بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم سبحانك لا علم لنا إلا ما علمتنا إنك أنت العليم الحكيم رب اشرح لي صدري ويسر لي أمري وحل العقدة من لساني يفقه قولي ربي زدني علما ونرب العلماء كرام respected elders my brothers my sisters especially my youngsters first of all we'd like to express our gratitude to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is granting us the ability and the tawfiq to sit in the masjid and discuss about the beloved Prophet of Allah, Sayyiduna Muhammadur Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Secondly, we express our gratitude to my beloved student, Maulana Sayyid Zahir Miya Sahib Hafidahullah, that mashallah every weekend, besides he went to look after his family and spend the time with the family, he sacrificed a huge amount of time for the sake of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to propagate the deen of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala especially to our youngsters. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala reward him abundantly and may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala protect him from all the evils. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala keep him with the health and with the knowledge and with the good hope that he can do the work of deen of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala more precisely say ameen. Thirdly, I am also grateful to the masjid committee that mashallah they have agreed to collaborate with Mawlana Sayyid Zahir Miya Habidahullah in order to organize these events. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala bless the masjid committee, this masjid and all the people who are affiliated with this masjid say Ameen. Especially my youngsters, you have heard the topic Mawlana Sab has mentioned that Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam mercy for the universe. Now when we say Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam mercy for the universe, First of all, we need to understand what is Muhammad, who is Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam and what it meant by mercy. So two things here. Number one, Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, we need to know who Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam is. And number two, Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, mercy for the universe. So there is two things here. And obviously the short time we have approximately around half an hour to 45 minutes. And then we hope so a quick Q&A is what? I'll try my level best to appreciate and I'll level best to summarize with regards to the life of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, particularly in these two topics, that Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, and he is the mercy for the universe. My youngsters, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala created us. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala created everything else in this universe. And everything else Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala created for our service. So the sun and the moon, the water and the oxygen and everything you see around us and everything we have around us, remember that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has created all of that for us. They are in our service. The sun serve, serves us, the moon serves us, the earth we live in is for our service, the cloud serves us, everything serves us. And we are here to serve Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And this bullet point is very beautifully explained by Allah Ta'ala in the Holy Quran. Allah Azza wa Jalla has said, وَمَا خَلَقْتُ الْجِنَّ وَالْإِنسَ إِلَّا لِيَعْبُدُونَ That I have not created the jinn kind, neither the mankind, but to worship me alone. So the purpose of our life is to worship Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala, is to give our servitude to Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala. الْعُبُودِيَّةُ لِلَّهِ Azza wa Jalla فَقَدْ the servitude, the ibadah, only belongs to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, very often Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala reminds the entire humanity regarding this in the Holy Quran. For example, Allah azza wa jalla has said, أَفَحَسِبْتُمْ أَنَّمَا خَلَقْنَاكُمْ عَبَثًا وَأَنَّكُمْ إِلَيْنَا لَا تُرْجَعُونَ Do you think that we have created you without any reason? And that you will not be returning to us? Meaning of the verse is, Allah Azza wa Jalla has definitely created us for some great reasons and indeed will definitely return to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. This is why as soon as we hear the death news regarding somebody, what do we say? Inna lillahi wa inna ilayhi raji'un. Straight away we remind ourselves that we started our journey from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. For some years, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will let us live in this world, in this life we have. And that after 70, 80, 90 years, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will cause us to die. And then we have to return to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. 
So we say as a reminder to us, Inna lillahi wa inna ilayhi rajiun. Now this is very briefly I have explained the purpose of life. That Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has created everything in this universe for our service. This is why we see everything is in our service. Everything we need, they are in our service. We don't have to pay anything to them. The sunshine, we don't have to pay. The glow of the moon, we don't have to pay. The water from the sea is there, subhanallah. Do you understand? Everything is there for our service. And we have been created to provide our service to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Which is called in Arabic al ubudiyya In English we call servitude. Now comes the question, how do we serve Allah Ta'ala? How do we worship Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala? We can't just do our things in our own imagination, our own style, because there's more than 8 billion people in the world. So therefore everybody's theory, everybody's way of life, everybody's way of thinking will be different. So therefore in order to worship Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala in the way Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala wants, Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala made the system of prophethood. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala created everything for us before Allah ta'ala created Adam alayhi salam and then Allah ta'ala created Adam alayhi salam and finally Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala sent Adam alayhi salatu wa salam to this world. So Adam alayhi salatu wa salam was the first human and Adam alayhi salam was the first prophet of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. All the prophets from Adam alayhi salatu wa salam to Isa alayhi salam and after Isa alayhi salam, our beloved prophet Sayyiduna Muhammadun Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam they all came to call the humanity towards Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala guide the humanity towards Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala take the humanity to their real destination which is Jannah, which is paradise. You understand? So therefore, all the prophets of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, they had one call, and that is, La ilaha illallah. That all people say there is no deity except Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So Adam alayhi salam said the same thing. Nuh alayhi salam said the same thing. Hud alayhi salam, same thing. Salih alayhi salam, same thing. Ibrahim alayhi salam, same. Ismail alayhi salam, same. Ishaq alayhi salam, same. Yaqub alayhi salam, same. Yusuf alayhi salam, same. Dawood, Sulaiman, everybody alayhi salam, same. Musa and Isa alayhi salatu wa salam. Everybody preached the same thing. And finally, our Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam as well said the same thing. Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said, Ya ayyuhan nas, qulu la ilaha illallah tuflihu. That all oh people say there is no deity except Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And that's the only way you can have the salvation in this world, in this life, and in the hereafter. My young son, listen very carefully. As far as all the previous prophets alayhi wa salatu wa salam are concerned, they have been sent by Allah ta'ala to their time only and to their nations only. Bear in mind, especially my youngsters, those go to college universities, they say carefully. All the prophets alayhi wasalam, all the prophets alayhi wasalam, they are time and they are people and they are nation. So Ibrahim alayhi salam to his people, his time. Musa alayhi salam to his time, his people. Isa alayhi salam, his time and his people. But subhanallah, when the entire universe will become like a global, global village. At that time, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala sent the universal prophet with the universal deen, with the universal guidelines, with the universal book, with the universal message. And that is none besides your prophet, my prophet, the prophet of the humanity, Sayyiduna Muhammadur Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala decided to send Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam in a time, in an era, when the entire world will be connected to each other. And the universe will become like a global village. Everybody will be advancing so much. At that time, the world needs somebody advanced. And there is no one more advanced than Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. There is no one who can guide the entire world except Muhammadur Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. There is nobody who has a mission which can the people of the entire world can follow. And that's not besides Muhammadur Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. And this is the issue we are going to discuss today, inshallah. One thing me claiming, one thing you claiming, one thing someone else claiming, that Muhammadur Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam is the mercy. But when I claim, when you claim, and someone else's claim, it's just a claim. But when Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says something, it's like the masterpiece, it's like the stump. That there is no doubt in whatever Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says. 
Now when we call our Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam mercy for the universe, our claiming that Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam is the mercy for the universe is not exaggeration. It's not out of love and affection. It's a reality. We are claiming it only because Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has said so in the Holy Quran. So therefore regarding Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, Allah ta'ala has said, وَمَا أَرْسَلَّاكَ إِلَّا رَحْمَةً لِلْعَالَمِينَ that Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, we have not sent you, but as a mercy for the entire universe. Now as I said earlier, are two things. One thing is Muhammad rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, and the second thing, rahmatul lil alameen. Now Muhammad rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, he is the servant of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. His father's name is Abdullah. His mother's name is Amina. He was from the Banu. Hashim, tribe of Quraysh, and he was born in Mecca, Mukarrama, from the descendant of Sayyidina Ismail alayhi salam, who was the son of Ibrahim alayhi salatu wa salam. Muhammad Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam is the final messenger of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. He was born 570 AD, and he, Sayyidina Muhammad Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam received prophethood from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala at 610 when Muhammad Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam was 40 years and 6 months old. Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, exactly 6 months and uh, 40 years and 6 months old, Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam was declared by Allah ta'ala officially as the Prophet of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. The first wahi revealed to Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, the first five verses of Surah Al-Ala. Allah Azza wa Jalla has said, Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim, Iqra'a bismi rabbika al-ladhi khalaq, khalaq al-insana min alaq, Iqra'a wa rabbuka al-akram, al-ladhi allama bil khalaq, allama al-insana ma lam ya'la. Now this is Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam declared by Allah Ta'ala as the prophet for the humanity, as the prophet for the jinns, as the prophet for the humans. In fact, he is the prophet of the entire creation of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam has many, many qualities. Many, many qualities, Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam has said. But one of these qualities, from these many qualities, which we're going to discuss today is, وَمَا أَرْسَلَّاكَ إِلَّا رَحْمَةً لِلْعَالَمِينَ That Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, we have not sent you but as a mercy for the entire universe. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, Rabbul Alameen, we recite in every rakat of salah, Alhamdulillahi Rabbil Alameen. All praise belong to Allah, the Lord of the universes. And the Lord of the universes, Allah Azza wa Jalla has sent his prophet, final prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, is rahmatan lil alameen. Allah says in the Holy Quran, وَمَا أَرْسَلَّاكَ إِلَّا رَحْمَةً لِلْ عَالَمِينَ Comes the question, Shaykh, what is rahma? The Arabic word rahma means mercy. This is the literal meaning of it. But if you go more deep inside, Rahma means reclination of the heart towards something. For example, you brothers, mashallah, listening to me very attentively. So therefore, I automatically have a soft heart towards you. That mashallah, these youngsters, they could have been in the park now. They could have been watching movies now. They could have been with their devices now. But they have left all of those things. And for the love of Allah and love of His Rasul sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, they came to the masjid. They could have done something else. But subhanallah, for the love of Allah and love of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, and love for our deen, and in order to learn the deen, they have came to the masjid. And after praying Zuhar Salah in congregation, they haven't left. They're still waiting to hear about Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Now this quality automatically will create a soft heart in my, soft corner in my, in my heart. Exactly for you as well, that mashallah, this shaykh is trying to talk about our beloved Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. So therefore you say, because he's talking about our beloved Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, let's listen to him. So after all, it will create a soft corner in your heart as well regarding me. Now in Arabic, this is called rahma. In Arabic, this is called what? Say it, rahma. When you recline towards something. Now Allah Ta'ala saying to Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, that Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, we have not sent you, but as a rahmah for the universe. What Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is trying to say, my youngsters, is that when the people of the world, they will run around for having the mercy from somebody, for having the sympathy from somebody, for having the love and affection from somebody. And when people want to have that, 
my creation, my servants, my slave. If you want to have it free of charge, then there is no one in the world who has it except Muhammad Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. What time is the uh, World Cup starting tonight? Five o'clock? Four o'clock. Who said four o'clock? Four o'clock. Mashallah, so you know about it, yeah? So shall I, shall I continue the talk after four o'clock? Nah, can't do that. Now do you know, probably you have seen in the social media, subhanallah, subhanallah. From 1994 up until 2022, for these eight World Cups, how much they have spent? It's mentioned. TRT, they have given a poster regarding how much they have spent. Allahu Akbar, Allahu Akbar. Maximum they spent previously were 15 billion. Maximum. It started from half a billion. Maximum 15 billion. But for the Qatar World Cup this year, 220 billion. Allahu Akbar. 200 and what say 20 billion dollars they have spent already in order to host this world cup and just last month the humanity reached to 8 billion now in the world 8 billion of us children of adam alayhi salam and out of this 8 billion subhanallah two two is us as you mean two billion mashallah in the world is us those who say la ilaha illallah muhammadur rasulullah so out of this 8 billion, how many are us who say la ilaha illallah Muhammad Rasulullah? 2 billion, subhanallah, 2 billion. So as soon as I seen the poster, TRT poster, that 220 billion, I divided that amount of dollars for every individual, the 8 billion people we have in the world. So I divided and worked it out that if it was divided between the 8 billion people, every individual in the world will have 27.5 million dollars. 27 point what say it five million dollars every individual will have now imagine for just a game they have spent that much of the money and if that money was to be spent all over the world for eight billion people everybody will become millionaires 27.5 million you and i may have received but will they will they ever spend that money for you and i no in the third world countries people are living below the poverty line they can't, they, they have their, we subhanallah, we daily have the three meals, breakfast, lunch, and supper. There are people in the world, they don't even have it once in a day. They don't have the clean water. They don't have the clothes, subhanallah. And not only in thousands, there are in millions in the world. But who cares for them? Nobody. But subhanallah, you understand, وَمَا أَرْسَلَّاكَ إِلَّا رَحْمَةً لِلْعَالَمِينَ Subhanallah, you have to go to Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam's wife, Sayyida Aisha Siddiqa radiallahu ta'ala anha, our beloved mother, she says, once a lady came to my house, and she had two daughters. She had how many daughters? Two daughters with her. And she said, mother, give me something to eat. Subhanallah, subhanallah. Muhammadur Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam in his house, on that day, there wasn't anything besides only one date. Allahu Akbar. How many dates? One date only. And our beloved mother Sayyidah Aisha Siddiqa radiallahu ta'ala and I used to say, we used to see months, the new crescent of the months continuously for several months. And in the houses of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, there is nothing except two black things, water and dates. So Sayyidah Aisha Siddiqa radiallahu ta'ala and said that lady came and she had two daughters with her. Allahu Akbar, Allahu Akbar. And she said, give us some food. Sayyidina Aisha radiallahu anha said that I never had anything besides only one date. Sayyidina Aisha radiallahu ta'ala anha, Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam trained her. Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam taught her. This is why we see out of the Ummahat al Mu'mineen, the most beloved one to Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam is Sayyidina Aisha radiallahu ta'ala anha. And how many narrations she narrates from Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam? 2,210. 2,210 ahadith. She narrates from Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. So what she did, she gave that day to that lady. That day to what say? That lady. Sayyidina Aisha radiallahu anha for a second she never thought that I have only one. How am, am, am I going to survive? What am I going to eat? No. Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam has taught the ummah, taught the sahaba and the wives, yuthiruna ala anfusihim walau kana bihim khasasa. They give preference to others even though they themselves have to be suffering. 
So Sayyida Aisha radiallahu ta'ala anha gave that date to that lady. As soon as that lady took that date, only one date, Allahu Akbar, she took it and she cut it into two pieces. Gave one to one daughter and the other part to the other daughter. And then she left. Sayyida Aisha radiallahu ta'ala anha, she was observing that. Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam returns home. Sayyida Aisha Siddiqa radiallahu ta'ala anha relates this incident to Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam then said to Sayyida Aisha, Ittaqin naar wa la bishukki tabaratin. That Aisha protect yourself from the fire of hell. Even though by giving one piece, one piece of the date in the path of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. This is just a glimpse regarding Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam being rahmatan lil alam. Can you see how much Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam prepared the Sahaba and the wives in order to be selfless and sacrifice for the other humanity, give preference to the others? Comes in my mind, there is a Sahabi by the name Sakhar al-Ghamidi radiallahu anhu. Sakhar al-Ghamidi radiallahu ta'ala anhu is one of those Sahabi who were in the term of the Muhaddithun, they are called Ashab al-Uhdan. Ashab al-Uhdan are those Sahaba who only narrate one hadith from Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. And there's many Sahabi who are called Ashab al -Muhdan. They have only narrated one hadith from Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. So this Sahabi, Sayyiduna Sakhar al-Ghamidi radiallahu ta'ala There is a reciter of the Quran as well in the YouTube, you can hear it. Sa'ad al-Ghamidi. Sa'ad al-Ghamidi. So this Sahabi, his name is Sakhar al-Ghamidi. And he only narrates one hadith from Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Sakhar al-Ghamidi says, Allahu Akbar, and this is the mercy, my brothers, especially my youngsters, that if we follow the deen of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, Allah's mercy will automatically follow us. Because Allah ta'ala has said, we have not sent Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, but as a mercy for the entire universe. That means whatever Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam did, whatever he has said, whatever were his sunnah, if we practice them, definitely the mercy of Allah will come to us. Subhanallah. So this Sahabi, he says, the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam has said in the hadith, and Imam Tirmidhi rahimahullah quotes that hadith, that who Allah grant my ummah the blessings and the barakah in their mornings. You know, every morning when you wake up early, Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam has said, who Allah grant my ummah blessings in their morning, meaning anything they initiate, anything they start in the morning, Allah ta'ala put barakah and blessings in it. Allahu Akbar, Allahu Akbar. Now this Sahabi narrates, and he only narrates one hadith from Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. And he has belief in that hadith, yaqeen in that hadith, and he practices this hadith. Now as a result, what happened? وَمَا أَرْسَلَّاكَ إِلَّا رَحْمَةً لِلْعَالَمِينَ Sayyiduna Sakhar al-Ghamidi radiallahu ta'ala an. Because of this hadith, he will send his, send his businessmen and tradesmen early in the morning, every morning. To go to the bazaar, to go to the market, and do the business on his behalf with his goods, he will send them because of this hadith every day early in the morning. Subhanallah, Sakhar al Ghamidi radiallahu ta'ala, and who he himself says, because of practicing the hadith of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, how much mercy of Allah I have that I become eventually the richest man of the entire city of Kufa. The entire city of Kufa, after Makkah, Medina, the third Islamic city we hear the most is Kufa. When Imam Abu Hanifa rahimahullah, Imam Sufyan al-Sawri rahimahullah, Imam Ibrahim al-Nakhai rahimahullah, and above everybody, Abdullah ibn Mas'ud radiallahu ta'ala an, and his student Aswad al Khama rahimahullah, they were the ones residing in that Kufa, the city of Kufa. People of Kufa went to Sayyidina Umar radiallahu ta'ala an, asking him that send somebody from Medina to us who can come and teach us. Sayyidina Abdullah ibn Mas'ud radiallahu ta'ala said, I will send Abdullah ibn Mas'ud to you. Even though I really wanted Ibn Mas'ud to be with me in Medina Munawwara, but I will give you preference over me. And Sayyidina Abdullah ibn Mas'ud was sent by Sayyidina Umar radiallahu ta'ala anhu to Kufa. After many years when Sayyidina Ali radiallahu anhu became Khalif, and Sayyidina Ali radiallahu ta'ala anhu wanted to take Darul Khilafa, the Islamic capital from Medina to Kufa. And he shifted from Medina to Kufa. Subhanallah, when he went there and he saw the mihna and the hard work of Sayyidina Abdullah ibn Mas'ud radiallahu ta'ala and, and he has taught nearly everybody and there is so many scholars in Kufa. Sayyidina Ali radiallahu anhu said, Subhanallah, Wallahi qad mala al Kufata Ummu ibn Abd. Allahu Akbar. The entire city of Kufa is filled by knowledge by Ibn Mas'ud radiallahu ta'ala. Allahu Allah. Allah. Now this Sahabi Sakhar al ghamidi is saying in the entire city of Kufa, I have become the richest person. Why? Because of practicing this one hadith of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. 
One hadith of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. That the entire city of Kufa, I am the richest man. And why he says? Because in the hadith, Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam made dua. That wa Allah, to my ummah, grant them the barakah and the blessings in the morning. Therefore, from now on, make sure we go to bed early, wake up early in the morning. And do our tasks after Fajr. Make the habit of waking up early. Sleeping all the way till late, 11 o'clock, 12 o'clock. And some people, subhanAllah, because they have colleges and universities in the daytime, in Monday to Friday, so they make the qada of that sleep Saturday, Sunday. Wake up 2 o'clock. La hawla wa la quwwata illa billah. Wake up 3 o'clock afternoon. Where is the Zuhar Salah? And in the winter days, where is the Asr Salah? So therefore, la hawla wa la quwwata illa billah. Sleeping over that time is not a good practice. Early to bed, early to rise. Makes you healthy, wealthy, and wise. Whoever has said, sadaqa man khal. Whoever has said has spoken the truth. So therefore, Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam's every teaching of Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam is mercy. Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, he himself is a word said, mercy. Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, subhanallah, in one of the narration of Shamail, and Imam Tirmidhi rahimahullah is quoted as well, that Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam was residing once in the house of Sayyidah Aisha radiallahu anha. The news came to Madinah Munawwara that Adi ibn Hatim, the son of Hatim Thai, has arrived to Al Madinah. Who is Hatim Thai? He was the most generous person in Arabia. People will give his example that this person is like generous, like Hatim Thai. His son Adi ibn Hatim, he had extreme enmity with Rasulullah sallallahu alaihi wasallam. In the narration, it said that he said to his sister, "Whenever this news comes to Al Madinah, Makkah al Mukarrama." That Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam is coming to Makkah Mukarramah to conquer Makkah. Just tell me the news. I don't want to see the face of that person. I'll just leave Makkah as soon as I hear that. So he told his sister, get the horses ready. Now Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam when he had to leave Makkah Mukarramah at the age of 53. And he had to do the hijrah and go to al Madinah to the Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala made a promise to Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Allah Azza wa Jalla has said, Inna al-ladhi farada alayka al-Qur'an la raadduka ila ma'ad. That Allah who has revealed the Qur'an on you, Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, shall definitely bring you back to the base again. So what happens? At the age of 53, Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam leaves Makkah al-Mukarram. And at the age of 61, Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, they come back to Makkah al-Mukarram as a victim. And Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam conquers Makkah al-Mukarram. Now when the news came to Makkah Mukarrama that Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam is heading towards Makkah, Adi ibn Hatim, due to extreme enmity with Rasulullah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, he headed towards Yemen. And he said, I don't want to see the face of this person. Allahu Akbar. So he went to Yemen. And he took his younger sister as well with him. Now when they both went to Yemen, his sister tried to convince him. He said, okay, you have that enmity against this person. You don't want to face him. You don't want to listen to him. But what's the point of having such a grave and such a dangerous type of enmity with somebody? Let's go and listen to him, see what he says. There's no harm listening from somebody. So he wasn't willingly accepting the invite from his sister. But finally, as a sister, when she kept on insisting him, finally he said, okay, we'll go to Medina and listen to him, what he says. Allah Akbar. So he and his sister, they were arriving to al Madina al Munawwara. The news came to Medina. Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam was residing in the house of Sayyidah Aisha radiallahu anha. You can imagine the level of enmity this man has with Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. He doesn't want to see him, doesn't want to hear him. He left the entire city of Makkah Mukarramah and went to Yemen. You can imagine how much grudge and enmity this person had against Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. But Sayyidah Aisha radiallahu ta'ala anha, she narrates in the hadith that when the news reached to al Madinah al Munawwara, and Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam heard that Adi ibn Hatim is approaching to al Madinah. Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam run out of the house without wearing the upper garment of the body. Saying in Arabic, Marhaban bin Raki bil Muhajir. Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam saying this in the mouth and he left the house of Sayyidah Aisha radiallahu anha out of joy and excitement. Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam left the upper garment of the body saying that I welcome you, O traveler, I welcome you, O traveler. And who is this person? Adi ibn Hatim, who has extreme enmity and grudge against Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Example of, وَمَا أَرْسَلْنَاكَ إِلَّا رَحْمَةً لِلْعَالَمِينَ 
the Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam, whether they are friends or enemy, they like or dislike, they hate or love, everybody was equal to Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam. He would cater for everybody equally. Now what happens? This man comes. Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam goes approaches him, and Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam embraces him. Meanwhile, Ali ibn Hatim says, "A lady, an old lady, she comes." You have nannies at home, yeah? Daddy at home? Nani at home, yeah? You see them, yeah? How many of you have daddy at home? Nobody? All your daddy gone? Subhanallah. No, anybody has nani at home? Nobody has. Most of you have your daddy. MashaAllah, he has as well. See? Anyone else have daddy? MashaAllah, many of you have now. MashaAllah. So why are you shy about it, eh? They are your blessing, the places of your dua. Take care of them, subhanallah. Especially when you have grannies at home, granddads and grannies, they make dua for you. So look at Ustad, look at me. So when people reach to the old age, now the old age and the uh, toddlers, they become similar. So for example, if you have the young ones, as soon as you walk home, you're, you're an elder brother, for example, 15, 16, and you have a younger brother of three, four eight years old. As soon as you go home, as soon as you walk inside, what does he say? Brother, did you get me sweet? Did you give me a packet of please? Are you going to take me to the... And subhanallah, his gossip never ends. Finally, like for example, may Allah protect you, you never get fed up with them. Finally, you say, can you be quiet? Which you shouldn't do. But sometimes people get annoyed. Because at a, at a young age, they like to talk a lot. Same thing happens at the end as well. When you become 80 plus, 85 plus, 90 plus, people just like to go gossip, 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 gossip. gossip. So when people normally become old, they like to gossip a lot, they talk a lot. At that time, you have to remain quiet. Like when you are a kid and you kept on yapping, 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 yapping. Your mom has to be quiet, uh, patient with you. Your dad had to be patient with you. Your elder brothers and sisters, they had to be uh, patient with you. Your granddad, grandma, they have to be patient with you. Likewise, when they become old, when we grow up and become the young man, we have to be patient with them. Whatever goes round, comes round. Now, meanwhile, Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa was holding the hands of Adi ibn Hatim and taking him towards the masjid comes an old lady. And as soon as the old lady comes, subhanallah, naturally because of their old age, their gossip never ends. Now, this lady keeps on talking to Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam for such a long. This happened, that happened, this happened, that happened, this happened, that happened. Like if you have the daddy at home, nani at home, Oh my day, it's continuous. You understand? It continues. She doesn't seem to understand you had chips, your full stomach is full. But she will say, no, you have to have bath. You have to have rice, you have to have roti. It's just out of the love. So this lady kept on talking to Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. And Adi ibn Hatim looking at the remarks on the face of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. That what is the reaction of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam? But subhanallah, وَمَا أَرْسَلَّاكَ إِلَّا رَحْمَةً لِلْعَالَمِينَ Our Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam never even had a little bit of wrinkles in the forehead. Showing that I am getting fed up, I haven't got the whole day for you. Can you leave me alone please? Can you go home? I have other things to do. No! Allah will never ever. Then Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam walks with Adi ibn Hatim to the house. Adi ibn Hatim to the what? Say it? House. Now one of the arrow has already hit the heart of Adi ibn Hatim. But look at the characteristic of this person. Such a great man. Such a great prophet of Allah. And look at his behavior with the ordinary woman. If our prime minister comes here and an old lady, she approaches the prime minister. Wow, subhanallah. Will they let her? Will they let her go to her? Go to the prime minister. There will be security. They will take her away. But Rahmatullil Alameen, she is talking to him for such a long, Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam is listening very attentively. Second thing Adi ibn Hatim says, then Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam held my hand and took me inside the house. Now Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, Allahu Akbar, especially my youngsters, you know, live your life for Allah. Don't live your life for money. Because the peace and tranquility, the money cannot buy. People in the world who are the richest people in the world, they are the ones who suffer the most and they are the ones who commit suicide the most. Why? They had name and fame, they had money. Then why do they have to commit suicide? Because peace and tranquility is something which money cannot buy. By remembering Allah Ta'ala, following Allah's instructions and following the deen of Allah comes the tranquility in the heart. Money cannot buy that. Now we have everything in our house, subhanAllah, as soon as you enter, we have the carpet, we have the wooden floor, we have the sofas, we have all the luxurious things inside our houses. 
But did our Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam had any of these things? No, he had none of these things, and that was unwilling. Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam wanted to become like that. If he wanted, Allah Taala could have given him Jannatul Firdaus in this world. Imam Suyuti rahimahullah has mentioned the hadith in Tadribul Rawi. I haven't seen it in any, any of the Sunan, like in any of the Masanim. But Imam Suyuti rahimahullah has mentioned it in uh, Tadribul Rawi. That uh, once a Sahabi, uh, once an angel came to Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, and he said, Ya Rasulullah, Allah is giving you the option. Two options you have. Do you want to be a king prophet, or do you want to be a poor prophet? Allahu Allah. Meanwhile, Jibreel alayhi salam come. And Jibreel says to Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, that Muhammad, da'nafsak. Lower yourself. And tells Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam to adopt the second option, which is, I want to be a poor prophet. So Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said to that angel, tell Allah ta'ala, I want to be a poor prophet. So Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam being a poor person, it was willingly. It wasn't that Allah ta'ala deprived him from the mercy of Allah. Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, on purpose he wanted to be a poor prophet. Because every poor person will go 500 years before the rich person to Jannah. And 500 years will be the days of the hereafter, not the days of the world. And what is the, in one narration he says, one day of the hereafter is equal to 1,000 days of this world. Another ayat says, 50,000 years of this world. So a poor person will go to Jannah how many years? 500 years before the rich person. So Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam's house, very simple. Only he had one cushion in the corner for him to sit down. Now look at the mercy of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam comes in. Adi ibn Hatim, who wasn't a Muslim yet, he narrates that in the house there's only one cushion. And Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, he himself, he sits on the floor and gives me the cushion to sit down. وَمَا أَرْسَلَّاكَ إِلَّا رَحْمَةً لِلْعَالَمِ After seeing this character of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, the heart of Sayyiduna Adi ibn Hatim is melting. Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam then sees a cross on his neck. As a sign of Christianity, they wear the cross. And it's like a salib. It's like, a, like an idol. They worship it. They prostrate it sometimes. So Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said, Adi, for how long are you going to carry this salib? This idol? This cross in your chest? Are you not going to proclaim shahada? Subhanallah, Sayyiduna Adi ibn Hatim then took it off and proclaimed, Ashhadu an la ilaha illa Allah, wa ashhadu anna Muhammad al-Rasulullah, wa ma arsallaka illa rahmatan lil alameen. Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, you know you youngsters, Allahu Akbar. Prophet, look at youngster, hello, this one. Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam was very much loving and caring towards you youngsters. Very much loving and caring towards you youngsters. How much Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam is to love the youngsters, do you know? Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, he would become like a horse. He would become like a what, Sayyid? Horse. And he will make Hassan and Hussein radiallahu ta'ala anhuma ride on him, Allahu Akbar. So Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam acted like a horse on the ground. And who is riding him? Either Sayyiduna Hassan and Sayyiduna Hussein. So once Sayyiduna Umar radiallahu anhu walks into the house of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, and he says, Wah, subhanallah, what a super ride. What about Sayyid? Super ride. The Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam is acting like a horse. So what a super ride. Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam says to Sayyidina Umar, Umar, the rider is super as well. Uh, that who is riding, i.e. Hassan radiallahu ta'ala anhu, he is great as well. Allahu Akbar, Allahu Akbar. Regarding the youngsters, Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said, you are the ones from the flowers of the flowers of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. You are the ones because of you, the parents, sometimes they show stinginess and miserliness. They don't like to spend in the path of Allah. They don't like to go in the path of Allah because of you. But indeed, innakum lamin rayhanillah. Indeed, you are from the flowers of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. This is why in the hadith, Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said to the parents that you have taught one adab, one good conduct to your child is better than giving a charity in the path of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. This is what we see in the ahadith. Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam used to love the youngsters. And he would take extra care of the youngsters. We come across a hadith of Sayyidina Mu'ad ibn Jabal radiallahu ta'ala. Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam held him from the shoulder. And Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said, Wa ma'ad, inni yuhibbuka fillah. I love you for the sake of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. 
So therefore, Mu'ad, after every salah, say, Allahumma inni ala dhikrika wa shukrika wa husni ibadat. And we have heard the famous hadith in Sayyid Bukhari and Muslim Kitab al-Nikah, Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, how he takes care of their well-being. Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam says, Ya ma'ashar al-shabaab, man istata'a minkum al-ba'ata fal yatazawwaj, fa innahu aghaddu lil-basar, wa ahsanu lil-farad, wa man lam yastati'a fa'alayhi bil-siyam, fa innahu lahu wida. Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam gives the instructions to the youngsters regarding their well-being, how to protect their chastity and modesty. Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam tells them in the hadith. So therefore, Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam is the mercy for the entire universe. Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam lived a life tirelessly. Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam's mission was always benefit the people. If Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam had to take any harm, Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa took it. But Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam never ever gave any harm to anyone. Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam always cried for us. And Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam will come in use for us in the hereafter. Especially my youngsters nowadays, somebody gives you a lollipop. You say, wow, this guy is safe, man. When somebody brings a, like a packet of crisps when he comes to your house, they say, mashallah, I want these guests to come to our house very regularly because they come with something. They don't come empty handed In the summer holidays, if somebody comes with a few lollipops, few ice, ice lollies, subhanallah, you start loving that guy. On the Eid day, you wait for that guy to come because they come with the with something to eat. They come with a bit of dish. They come with a bit of sweet. And somebody comes empty-handed. You don't want to give a salam to him. You shouldn't be like that anyway. But if somebody does anything little, subhanallah, in Arabic there is a saying, Al-Insan Abdul Ihsan. Insan, human, is the slave of Al-Ihsan. Anyone does anything to you, you become kind of like reclining towards that person. Do you understand? You came back, those of you drive, you came back from work, mashallah. And then you see somebody uh, is parked on your road, but they are not going to be very long for parking. So you're looking for parking space. And this brother calls, you say, brother, I'm going to go in a bit, you can park here. He says, Jazakallah, brother, I came back from work late at night, and there wasn't any space. Mashallah, you saved my life. I had to go on the other side of Mansell Road, or Masbury Road to park, but subhanallah, you have given me this space at one o'clock at night. Thank you very much, brother. You'll be so nice and kind towards that person. On a raining day, on a snowing day, you're waiting in the bus stop, subhanallah. And the bus is taking ages. Suddenly you see one of your neighbor, he's driving past. Then he says, brother, come, I'll give you a lift home. Subhanallah, you say, thank you, bro, mashallah. You protect me from all this rain and all this water and all this cold. Why? Little favor this person has done. And you have become, subhanallah, as if he's student. You said, thank you, brother, very much. Jazakallah khairan, you've done a big favor. Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam has done the biggest favor for us and he will be doing as well on the day of judgment. I'll conclude by one hadith. Just to, just to hit your minds, my youngsters. Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam has said in the hadith that Allah ta'ala has given all the prophets alayhi wa sallatu wa sallam, the previous prophets, one unique dua to make. And they all made that dua in the world. But I, Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, has preserved that dua for my ummah in the hereafter. And I make that dua for my ummah in the hereafter. So Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam will make the dua to Allah ta'ala for all of us in the hereafter. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will give our Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam so much until our Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam is satisfied. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala won't stop giving him. Allah Ta'ala will surely give you so much until you are pleased with Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. So therefore my youngsters, my elders, my brothers and my sisters, if they are listening, the way to salvation now is by following the deen of Rasulullah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. Practicing the deen of Rasulullah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. In this life, we'll have the peace and tranquility and salvation. In the grave as well, we'll have the peace and tranquility and salvation. And in the hereafter as well, Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala will tell us to enter Udkhuluha bi salamin amineen. Enter to the paradise peacefully. Enter to the paradise. Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala will say it to us. And that is only if we follow the deen of Rasulullah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. And remember Rasulullah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam practice his sunnah, live the daily life according to the sunnah of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam and love Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam more than anything and anyone else. One hadith of Sahih Bukhari and I conclude, Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam has said, لا يؤمن أحدكم حتى أكون أحب إليه من والده وولده والناس أجمعين None of you will become a believer until I, Muhammad, become more dearer to him than his parents, his children and himself and everyone else in the world. 
So if we love Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, we follow Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. We follow Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Every aspect of our life will be rahmah. Wa ma arsallaka illa rahmatan lil. Because Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam is rahmah. So the more we follow in every aspect of our life, there will be rahmah. Wake up in the morning with the sunnah of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Whole day you will have rahmah. Go to bed in the sunnah of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Entire night sleeping will become rahmah. Go to work and practice according to the sunnah of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. The entire job will become the rahmah. Go to colleges in the university, in the educational place. Learn the knowledge according to the sunnah of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Everything will become rahmah. As a Businessmen do the business according to the Sunnah of Rasulullah sallallahu alaihi wasallam will become rahmah because you have attached yourself with the powerhouse which is known as the house of rahmah. May Allah subhanahu wa taala grant us the ability to understand our Rasul sallallahu alaihi wasallam, love our Rasul sallallahu alaihi wasallam, follow his deen, and finally die with the deen of Islam. May Allah subhanahu wa taala grant all the organizers all the best rewards in this world and in the hereafter. And all of you brothers and sisters who are listening very attentively, Allah subhanahu wa taala grant you rewards abundantly as well. Jazakumullah khair. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh.